<clears throat> Hi guys, Dave Wilson here again. Now today I'm going to do some melting and uh, recycling some silver. Uh, I'm going to cast it, make some bars. Now normally if I'm just melting a little bit of silver or gold I would just use a crucible, something like this. So using my Smith Little Torch with the oxypropane nozzle, put a bit of metal in, I can melt that. But realistically with a crucible and a torch I can only get say up to two ounces anything more than sort of 60 grams it gets really difficult to keep it hot so what do you do when you want to melt and recycle a lot of metal uh, this is an old silver trophy i've got some silver offcuts here i've got boxes of jewelry and i've got more of these so how do i melt so much well when it comes to larger melting jobs you need one of these Whee. This is an electric melting furnace. Um, I'm going to take it to the other area in a moment and we're going to do some melting, show you how it works. Just a little point on safety advice here guys. Obviously the furnace is hot and the metal that you're pouring is going to be hot. So you've just got to be careful about any spills or splashes. So it's worth looking up welding equipment and um, by that I mean safety equipment for welders so for example welders gloves they'll protect your hands from the heat when you're putting stuff into the furnace um, get yourself a full face shield to prevent any splashes anything like that very important a welders apron um, you don't want something like this that's cotton that's flammable you want something that's leather something that's not going to catch fire and an important thing that a lot of people overlook is footwear. Uh, if you get welders boots you can get fireproof boots um, at the very least you should have some sturdy work boots just in case you get any splashes it just helps to protect your feet so make sure you've got the proper equipment keep safe and you'll have no problems with it so let's get on like I say use your common sense be aware of the environment people around you, people working around you, tell them that the furnace is on, make sure they're aware that it's hot, don't touch it. Obviously keep pets, children away from it. Another important feature regarding placement of this is you need ventilation. <clears throat> Especially the first time you use it, you're gonna get a, quite a bit of smoke off it as various things burn off it. If you're recycling old things like scrap jewelry and things like that, there's dirt, there's tarnish, there might be bits of glue and adhesive from the backs of stone, there's makeup, skin, hair, all kinds of nasty things in there. So when you melt this down, you're gonna get a lot of smoke and fumes off it. So very, very important, I can't stress this enough, use one of these in a well-ventilated area. Grab your safety okay. equipment, grab your furnace, grab your silver, and follow me. Here I am at the soldering area. So it's nice and safe here. And I've got my ingot mold here, which I'm going to cast into. So I'm going to make some bars to make into silver. The unit's off and it's cold. So the first thing that you must do is just check it. So remove the lid, just pop that down to the side. And you want to remove the crucible when it's cold and just check. This is consumable and it will deteriorate over use. Uh, this has been used a couple of times, but we can see good condition. There's no cracks. A uh, little bit of rubbish in the bottom there. So I'll pop that in. Make sure the spout is towards the side there. Uh, the power button is just on the side. Here's a green rocker switch. So. Uh, you can see it doing some pre-checks here. There we go. And this is why I brought it in here so I could lift it up and show you the display. So basically we've got two numbers. So the bottom number, this is the target. So this needs to be set to the temperature about 38 degrees C above the melting point. So you can just use the arrows up and down there. You see it adjusting there, up and down. If you press it and hold, it will move faster. So you don't need to press it a thousand times. So I'm going to set it to 950. 
which is a nice good temperature for sterling silver. So that's the target temperature down there. The green number at the top, that is the temperature of the actual crucible inside. So you can see at the moment it's 14 degrees. It's fairly cold in here. So this is pretty much the ambient temperature of the room. Now that will slowly start to increase as the unit switched on and it will try to get to 950. Once it does, it will melt the silver. Once it gets to that temperature, the computer inside will automatically switch it on and off and regulate it and it will try to keep it at 950. Obviously, if you're taking the lid off and you're putting more metal in, that temperature will reduce a bit, but it will carry on heating it up and it will try and maintain 950. So you can see it going up now. So let's start to put some silver in. You need to make sure that all your silver will fit in the crucible. Um, this is the cup that you saw earlier, the silver cup. So literally just chopping it up with some shears into nice little pieces. It means it's easier to get into the crucible because it'll fit. Uh, and it also makes it melt quicker. Um, if you've got larger items like that that you can't cut up, smash them down with a hammer, just make them smaller and just make sure you can get them in the crucible. Now the crucible's cold at the moment but even so it's a good idea to use tongs. Um, very important, place the silver in gently. If you've got really heavy pieces like from casting don't just drop them in. Um, something like this for example, that's a couple of ounces of silver. If I just drop that straight in I could crack the crucible. So place it in gently. And you don't want to fill it completely. Fill about a third of your weight and then let it melt down. And then when it's melted, add some more. So just pop some silver in. Okay. So I'll just pop the lid on. Remember, keep the lid on. It warms up a lot faster. So you can see the temperature is now 50. So it's starting to warm up. A long way to go yet. Um, I've just checked my watch. It's 3 p.m. So... It'll probably take about 15 minutes to start to melt. It's had about so, six minutes now. You can see we're halfway there now, 423, 424, 25. It's going up faster and faster as it heats up. So, it, you know, it doesn't take long. 746 now, so we're nearly there, just a couple of minutes. You'll note at the side here, I've got my cast iron ingot mould so this allows me to cast two long ingots and these are great for putting through the rolling mill making wire which is what I'm going to do. Uh, they're coated in oil so when I pour the metal into it you might see some flame and a bit of smoke that's perfectly normal and I've put them on a soldering block so if I get any little drips or spills over the side here it's just going to go onto the soldering block so when they're cold pick them up recycle them and there's no damage and underneath here I've got a concrete floor so it's pretty safe in here I mentioned earlier ventilation well just behind me here I've got big doors wide open and there's a nice breeze drifting through so everything's nice you'll notice as well it doesn't make a noise uh, this is not dubbed this is me talking now it's perfectly silent there's no gas there's no hissing noise there's no roaring flame it's perfectly quiet which takes a bit of getting used to at first but it's uh, it's warm i can see the crucible at the top getting warm now so we're nearly there um when it hits about eight eight fifty the metal will start to melt then okay we're just approaching 900 now so i'm just going to take the lid off have a look i can see that the crucible is glowing red if i use the graphite rod i can feel that that's molten inside now, now that the metal's molten, I can start to top it up and add some more in now. And because this is now going into molten metal, this will melt quicker. Very important, don't splash, don't allow big things to drop in and splash. So be careful, just fill it gently and that will go down. So just pop the lid back on. Now, I don't know if you can notice here, uh, I've just put some more silver in the top. Uh, and you see it's gone back down to 920 now. It was at 958 before. So as you add metal and you set the lid off, it will cool down a little bit and you'll see this light coming on and off and it will keep heating it up and switching the thermostat on and off to try and get it about 950 for you. 
so I'll just give that a moment to melt down. Okay, so I think we're good now. Using the graphite rod, just give it a stir. And I can feel that that's completely liquid now. If you can feel pieces moving around or it feels lumpy, then just let it melt. So we're ready to pour. This works like a jug, so I'm just gonna pick it up very gently. And I'm just gonna pour into the ingot mold. I'm gonna lift my ingot mold up here just to see if I can get a nice, good, smooth pour. Lovely, beautiful. So I've got some nice ingots here. There we go, that's a good one. Uh, just a little small one there, a couple of little ones, but they're still usable. Um, that's a nice one there. Might just have to knock the edge off there. So once you've finished your casting, remember it's still hot, so replace the lid and just switch it off at the side there and then disconnect it from the wall as well and leave it to cool. Now very important, depending on the temperature, this could take a couple of hours to cool down. The lid's very hot and you see the crucible is still glowing red. So that's gonna take a few hours to cool down. Keep it safe, make sure nobody's around it, nobody touches it. Um, keep watching it, don't just leave it unattended overnight or something, keep watching it. So, let's go and see to our ingots. Uh, it does take a bit of practice, but once you get used to it, these things are great for putting through a rolling mill. So literally within a couple of minutes you can turn an ingot like that into strips like this for making rings, bangles. Um, you can keep on rolling it and moves into wire. So for example, my necklace here, yeah, all that is made out of recycled wire, exactly that. Melt it, cast ingots, put them through the Pepe tools, ultra mill, make wire, uh, you can make anything. Likewise, uh, if you want to make sheet, if you use one of these ingot moulds like this, the adjustable one, you can cast big flat ingots like these. And then again, you can either use them like that or you can put them through the mill and then you can turn them into thin sheet things like this and then again these can be cut out, pierced, used to make rings, whatever you want. You can see one here, uh, this is one I used to make a pendant, again all recycled. So by using the melter in combination with a couple of ingot moulds and your rolling mill you can recycle all your silver and turn it back into good usable stock. So, I hope you found that useful. Remember everything I told you about the safety advice. Um, it's quick, it's easy. I'd say it took about 15, 20 minutes for me to melt it down and convert my scrap jewelry into these burrs. So very quick, very simple process. Um, perfectly silent, put your silver in, 15 minutes and it's done. Just like baking a cake. So I hope you found that useful guys. Links in the description below if you want to learn more about this furnace and the other associated products from Pepe Tools. Thanks for watching, I've been Dave Wilson and I'll see you real soon on the next video. Bye for now.